today, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your Fatsek Vadir Regap, who's joining you for another teaching and learning session. And this time around, this is already our pointer session number 16. So before we get to start, I'd like to invite everyone to join our increasing number of next generation entrants and ambassadors worldwide. So give us a text or a call at 0906 to 019383 and email us at info at ragapusreview.com. Now, let's dissect the story of Jocelyn B. Rosario, USRN, from Lyceum Northwestern University, who passed the next generation NCLEX RN from State Board of Texas, last May 25, 2023. Here is her success story. To God be the glory, it was a magical moment when I first accessed the core shell of Surrey through those super sleepy because of magical coffee, it sinks into my brain cells. All the important topics I was surprised to when he mentors me. It was a great privilege on my part. I'd love it and all my sacrifices paid off. With all the warmth, welcome of Sir Ray staff to all mentors. Agyamanak unay awan labas na. Praise the Lord. Jocelyn B. Rosario, USRN, and praise God. This is actually very, very important. Take note. Praise God. And she's one of the hundreds and thousands of nurses who passed the next generation entrance worldwide to the Ray A. Capo system. Give us a call or an email through this information and details and join a rooster of passers see you now the next thing that you have to ask yourself is what do i need to study for the test and without further ado here we go copd what do you want to remember related to copd oftentimes when we try to focus on the pathophysiology we try to focus on things that are easily remembered from our lessons in the past but remember, the NPLEX is kind of tricky. Sometimes it's, it would ask you questions that you would be caught unaware, okay? So two things I'd like to highlight related to COPD. First, the diet has to be high calorie and high protein. Why? Because they needed extra energy because of their dizzy. Second, you have to focus on the symptoms and you have to know which symptoms are indicative of worsening of the patient or symptoms that are indicative of the development of complications. For example, if a patient has COPD and then the patient develops prostitutum, that indicates that the patient would have developed pneumonia, and that is fatal in elderly patients with COPD. Second, if the patient develops confusion and asterixis or flapping tremors, this indicates respiratory acidosis, which is also a complication of COPD, and that is due to the retention of carbon dioxide. That needs to be reported to the physician too. And of course, when there will be swelling of the fingers or swelling of the feet, okay, the patient would usually manifest together with the swelling, shortness of breath, plus lightheadedness. So those three things, swelling of the feet, shortness of breath, and lightheadedness, that would tell you that the patient could be developing your pulmonale, which is right ventricular hypertrophy. That is also a complication of COPD. So remember those two things, the diet and symptoms that are indicative of the patient's complications. Next, let's move on to the functional concept. A client with COPD should be provided with high calorie, high protein diet. They would need additional energy because of their disney. Next, you have your Allen test. This test is used in order to assess for the circulation of the specific area where a specimen is usually gathered before an arterial blood test analysis of um, the blood that's obtained in the area is performed. So now, how do we perform the Allen test? Some literature would call this modified Allen test. So remember the code F core. F means first ask the client to make a fist like this, and then you need to, the next step, letter C, compress the radial and the ulnar arteries. So which simply means you will need to occlude it in order to decrease the blood circulation in the area. 
And then you ask the patient to, once again, open the face. Okay. And then the last step is R. Release the ulnar compression. So when that happens, note that within 5 to 10, or some literatures would say 15 seconds, the pink coloration of the area should come back. So it simply means that there is adequate circulation in the area. So once again, F core. Make a fist, compress, open, then release the ulnar artery. Once again, fist, compress, open, and release. Of course, when you're doing that, the hand should be laying flat on a table, okay? So that's how you perform the Allen test before obtaining your specimen for ABG. That area is not a good area to obtain the specimen. So you call that a negative Allen test when the palm remains pale. However, if the palm immediately has regained its, its pinkish color, then that's, that simply means that the circulation in that area is not impaired. So therefore, it's a good area to obtain your specimen. So once again, arm up, okay, let's do it on the other side. Then ask the patient to open, close, open, close, close, and then press on the radius and the ulnar artery, okay? Then ask the patient to open the palm, release the ulnar artery, uh, compression, and note if there is change in the color of the palm, the palm normally should turn pinkish. Okay. So remember the Allen test is performed before a specimen for a period blood test analysis. used to assess collateral blood flow to the hands. Next, cystic fibrosis. Now, the main problem in cystic fibrosis would be the production of thick and sticky mucus. Primarily, it affects two systems. So there's going to be obstruction of the airways. So you need airway clearance therapy, and that would involve uh, positional changes to promote drainage of the secretions from the lungs. So that's facial therapy plus the administration of albuterol to promote dilatation of the airways and pulmozyme to thin the mucus. Next, your cystic fibrosis could also affect the ducts in the pancreas, the liver, and the intestines. So it's very important to administer pancreatic enzyme. The pancreatic enzyme, pancreas, must be taken with each meals and snacks to promote the digestion of fats. So in a patient with cystic fibrosis, the diet should be high sodium, high calorie, and high fat. Why does it have to be high fat? It, you need to replace the fats that the patient is excreting in their stools because those fats remain undigested. Okay? So remember, the pancreatic enzyme given to a client with cystic fibrosis must be given with each meal and snack. So every time the child eats. Okay? The second thing that you have to remember you have to learn how to use technology as you prepare for next generation entrance. But the lectures alone will not work because the test is high-tech. And then paper-based questionnaires will not work if it's the only thing you're doing. 
because the test is like that. You have to learn how to navigate the questions properly. And here at the Regapo system, we have internationally published learning tools. Plus, we have our own course shell where you can navigate to the different types of questions on the endpoints. And the third, you need a conducive environment that should keep your focus. So this is our NCLEX RN simulation at the Ray Gabos building, second floor here at UN Avenue in Manila, Philippines. And of course, our very intimate class that would facilitate learning in a very conducive environment. So may I invite you to join us for our next generation NCLEX RN Flex the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499. You have a choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, Cubank plus the three books, plus the NGN strategies with me and my quick fix session. So give us a call 0906-201-9383. So this is your mentor, your fact check buddy saying, hey Gapos, Okay, a functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX RN peers away. See you in my next video.